Hello, it is Sunday, December 26th, 2021. Happy Boxing Day. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Hope you had an excellent Christmas if you celebrate Christmas, and an excellent day if you don't. Um, I hope you're ready for a long, leisurely solve, because that's typically what we're in for on a Sunday. And of course, it's a themed puzzle. We're back to the themed puzzles, and today's has a title, Pest Control. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see what that's all about. But before we get on to that, I would like to expressly thank Kathleen Quinn, David Connell, and of course, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you very much to the three of you benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign and to everybody else who has backed the Daily Solve Patreon campaign at any level for any duration of time. I very much appreciate it. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve, where you will immediately gain access to a whole wealth of bonus video solves and um, uh, other benefits, such as additional access to the Daily Solve Discord chat server, uh, which is also something you can join in general, regardless of whether you're a Patreon subscriber. So uh, there you can chat with other members of the Daily Solve community about the New York Times puzzle, this series, other crosswords, and crossword construction. And links to both of those things are in the description field underneath each video. And speaking of the Patreon, I realized I've <laughs> lost all sense of time, um, which I think is a sort of an ongoing hazard in, in the last couple of years, but particularly so uh, over the festive season. And I am late with my mini puzzle speed solves, so I will try to get to that as soon as I can find the time. I'm sorry about that if you, uh, for those of you who are Patreon subscribers. And then I have some, some other bonus videos to, that I intend to record as well. I was thinking of waiting until I get home, but I don't know, maybe I, we'll have to see if I can find some time over the next day or two. Anyway, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle before we get on to today's. There are only, only a couple. Laura Saxon uh, clarifies that uh, she says, growing up in the 50s in the United States, a jumper was a standard article of clothing. It is a sleeveless dress worn over a blouse. So that's a good bit of context for me. I, I um, mainly think of a jumper as being a woolen sweater top. And Joseph George Blaze explains that the Jerry I was thinking of was Jerry Hallowell. I think I said Jerry Halliday or something. Another Spice Girl to go with the Mel's B and C Emma Bunton and Victoria Beckham, nay Adams. Sadly, not an answer in today's puzzle, but perhaps one in the future. Indeed, almost certainly will be at some point. And any profit confirms my suspicion that yesterday's puzzle was indeed the first appearance of the answer uh, shorts weather. So there we go. All right, let's get on to today's solve. I shouldn't beat around the bush anymore because it's a Sunday puzzle. Look at that huge grid. We have plenty to solve, so let's get solving. This was a crossword constructed by Christina Iverson. It's a name I recognize. She's been uh, constructing crosswords for the New York Times for a few years now. And edited, as always, by Will Shorts. This crossword, as I as I said, is pest control, and we we are on Sunday, so it is there will be a theme of some kind. We'll have to see what. All right, a point could be, I feel as though that could be any number of things. Let's look here. Number of signs, sides on a sign reading alto. Oh, could this be ocho for eight? If this is Spanish, let's see. What are some of these crosses? Had the opportunity to casually. Uh, yeah, that could be coulda. This could have been coulda. This answer. Oh, here we have our first theme clue. One wearing chapstick, perhaps. And it's in italics. And um, italics don't happen in every theme answer. In fact, they, they generally don't. Or sorry, every theme puzzle. But when they do, when the italics appear, often it's because they're indicating the theme clues. And it might be because there isn't a revealer answer, a clue that ties all of the theme clues together. And so the italics is essentially pointing us in the direction of some kind of shared property of all of the italicized clues. 
So we'll see what that is. That, that might be what this means. It might be something else, but that's that's typically what it means. I'm not going to try and solve this yet. I suspect it will be a pun. <laughs> that's my guess. Uh, space. It could be any number of things. It could be space out, sort of doze out, or uh, space as in um, a void or outer space, I suppose. It could be quite a few things. Blank motor, brain cover. Oh, this is one of those anatomical terms that I that I sort of know but don't access very frequently, so it's in the dusty recesses of my brain and I can't quite unearth it at the moment. Politico turned TV host. I don't know. To form thoughts could be to ideate. That looks fairly likely. And to catch could be to nab, maybe to catch to catch a crook, to nab a crook. A point um this is one of those classic classic clues that seems like I should be able to quite easily get it, especially with these crosses, and yet it's not coming to mind. So let's see. What was this again? Oh, right. One wearing chapstick. I don't think I'm... Horse, house, space. What is this? Poker variety. Poker... I don't know what that was. Poker variety similar to Texas Hold'em. Um, I think Omaha. I think this actually came up in a puzzle... Within the last several weeks, Omaha um, poker or something like that. Oh, space could be room. You have extra space. You have extra room, that sort of thing. Right, this brain matter thing. Uh, not, sorry, brain cover, something matter. Political turned TV host. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Oh, but a, to a point is to ordain. So not exclusively, but often in a religious context, a point, uh, ordination of a priest, for instance. Okay. This still could be horse or house. Uh, let's see. It could be something else, of course, as well. Echo, perhaps. Could be ape to echo somebody to ape them. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, not going to put that in yet. Counterpoint of thanks spelled THX in this sort of texting way. So what would the counterpart of that be? Please spelled PLS, perhaps? And that does that does um, fit the seven down, which is seeks a favor. We'll probably want an S at the end of that. Seeks a favor. Could be asks, for instance. School where a live bear used to take the field during football games. Wow. UCLA? Because UCLA, the University of California at Los Angeles, is the Bruins, which is a bear. So maybe... Let's try it and see. Let's see what happens. What is this? Oh, right. This is Echo. Oh, well, we have a P in there. Maybe it is Ape. Maybe I'll go out on a limb and put that in. Um, so we've got an Ape next to a bear. And Lost is at sea. I'm feeling very at sea. I'm lost. I'm not... don't have my full full command of my, of my faculties. Entertainment with a private audience. Oh, so there's a question mark. So there's a, there's a pun. This is... A bit of wordplay happening, and I think the wordplay is around the word private. So I think in this case we're referring not to private, meaning secretive or secluded, but or soul, but rather uh, a private as the military rank. So this may well be USO show. The USO being the organization that well, I think they do other things, but the, one of the things they do is um, organize and host events for. Uh, members of the American military stationed overseas, um, musicians and stand-up comedians and that sort of thing. So they, so the, so a USO show would be an entertainment with an audience of privates. Okay. Seeks a favor for you. It does look like asks, doesn't it? And here we have blank favor. It could be por favor, so more Spanish. And working hard. Working hard. Hmm. I could have guessed at it maybe here. We're working hard. We're at it. But that doesn't fit with USO show. US, it could be something else other than show, I suppose. Uh, people of the Southwest. Could this be the Apache, perhaps? Oops. No, no. And a boo-boo. Maybe this isn't show. No, nothing is looking very confidence-inspiring off of these crosses. 
So let's see, what if this, what if working hard were at it? And what if a boo-boo were an error? Does that, oh, a USO tour. There we go. So fair enough. A USO tour presumably consists of several USO shows. Uh, in either case, they are entertainment. Okay, so what is this? Oh, horseback rider? One wearing chapstick, perhaps. Horseback rider. So a horseback rider is wearing chaps. And they have a stick? What does it mean? This is, pro this is probably a very straightforward pun. Uh, horseback rider. I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm i frustrated that I don't understand the joke. That's, that's very irritating to me. Uh, Java activity, coding. So Java, the language, uh, the programming language, that is. And product from... An av. Huefo? What is this? Saves for later in a way. TiVos, so uses a... Um, do people still have TiVos, those things that would record television programs for you ahead of time? An ave. I actually don't know what this is, but it looks like Huefo for egg, doesn't it? Antarctic coordinate... looks like North Pole, but that would be the Arctic, not the Antarctic, right? Oh, sorry, this is italicized. It's another um, theme clue, so it's another pun of some kind. Maybe I'll refrain from taking a guess until I have more. I seem to be not on the wavelength of the punning going on here for whatever reason. Pimple lookalikes like, could be styes, perhaps, a dermatological uh, sort of blemish. Um, so there's a better term than that. First side to vote the yeas as opposed to the nays voting on a motion in, I don't know, a parliament or something like that. Catch. Uh, oh, here. You could say here, catch. And Baker's Joy Alternative. So Joy is capitalized, so that must be a brand name. Uh, Baker's Joy Alternative. Is that, what is that? I'm not sure what, what product it is, I'm sorry. Beginning stage. And here we have Geek Squad members, e.g. So Geek Squad members, so sort of like IT gurus or something? No, IT, IT guys maybe? I don't know. It'll be, I assume it'll be something around fixing computers. All right, one might be put through the ringer. Um, a sponge, a sop, I'm not sure. A texter's qualifier. So you could qualify a text with IMO, in my opinion, and a wishy-washy response. I don't know, maybe I don't know or something. I, I, that's pretty speculative, so let's check the crosses. Uh, I don't know about this. I could thrill you more than any blank could ever dare try thriller lyric. Oh, that's definitely something I should be able to bring to mind. And I know that song, of course, but... But I can't remember that particular lyric. Boy, not my day. The Glass Bead Game author, 1943, and Pecan or Peach. Well, each of those is certainly a type of pie, but it's an or clue, so it would be singular, so it couldn't be pies. Oh, a tree. Uh, each of those things grows on tree. trees and is a type of tree. There we go. Okay. Wishy-washy response. What is this? I doubt? I don't know. Ma oh, here's another... Oh, it's a very short theme clue pun. Malice, more formally. Malice, more formally. Boy, there's really something I'm not getting. Be up against... And a ploy, a ruse, is a ploy. Could this be North Pole? Baker's Joy Alternative. Oh, Pam? Is is Joy maybe a cooking oil? Or is that... 
what this is. And here we have beginning stage term, like a pregnancy term maybe or something, beginning, beginning stage. Oh, the germ of an idea, perhaps. That looks that that looks much more correct. Okay, we've got to get back to this corner though. This is this is giving me some some real resistance up here. So if this were pole, let's see, we have oh, I could thrill you more than any ghoul could ever dare try. That must that must be it. That sounds that sounds pretty familiar. And then the wishy-washy response would be, I might. And oh, the glass bead game author, uh, Hess, Herman Hess, and Malice more formally. and be up against. Oh, to oppose, of course, to oppose somebody, to be up against them. And one might be put through the ringer. Oh, a mop. You'd ring out a mop. Here we go. Malice, more formally. Okay. What is this? Mother? Ma? Lice, more formally? Ma. So ma, more formally. Oh, 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 ah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I finally get it. This is, this is quite clever. Okay, that really took me some time. Let me just quickly fill the rest of this in. So this is IT pros. Okay, so I now understand why the clues seemed like they were almost correct, but not quite. So one wearing chapstick, perhaps. The clue, so the, the, the theme of the puzzle, I'm sorry if you were far ahead of me on this. I apologize. Um, one wearing chapstick, perhaps. I was saying, so why is it, I mean, a horseback rider is someone wearing chaps, but what does the chapstick mean? It's obviously some kind of pun, but what does it mean? Well, we have to perform pest control on these clues. So if we de-tick, if we get rid of the tick, the pest, from this answer, we're left with one wearing chaps, perhaps, a horseback rider. Here, if we remove the lice, if we de-lice the clue malice more formally, we get the clue ma more formally, which is mother. And this one is incredibly clever, I think. If we remove the ant from Antarctic coordinate, we get an Arctic coordinate, which is the North Pole. And the thing that was the thing that's so clever about this to me is that it looks it look there's just something so strange. You see Antarctic and you see North Pole, and you think, well, those things are they're almost perfect matches. You know, with the horseback rider, I was thinking. Well, I could just be lacking some kind of equestrian knowledge. And there's some kind of pun about chaps and a stick that, I don't know, like the riding crop or whatever. I, I, I'm probably just, it's probably just a lack of knowledge on my part. But then you get to North Pole and Antarctic, and it's so close to matching, but, but it's the opposite of the thing. And I just couldn't figure out how that makes any sense. Uh, what, a, what, a clever, what a clever little conceit. I really enjoy that. Okay, that's great. I, I think this is my favorite experience with it my favorite type of experience with a theme when i can sort of start to scratch at it and i just don't understand it and then a couple of clues in it it clicks and i find that inc an incredibly satisfying moment anyway okay so what is this politico turned tv host oh al it must be al sharpton there we go okay and what do we have here it usually works in corners it usually works in corners, so it's not not a person. But I'm not sure. What is this? A man has cause for blank only when he sows and no one reaps. A man has cause for blank only when he sows and no one reaps. Oh, I'm not sure. A bit of tender... And blank course. I don't know, prep course maybe? Preparatory course? New York City transport stopping at Kennedy Airport. Oh, um, the air train? Long Island Railroad, does that, go to, does that go to Kennedy? New York City transport stopping at Kennedy Airport. It'll be a train, won't it? What trains go to the airport? Devices with nunchucks and business news magazine. Oh, INC for Incorporated, I think, is a business news magazine. Parable or allegory? 
a tale, perhaps a story with a with a um, a, a purpose, a message, a moral. A bit of tinder could. Oh, a twig, of course, is a bit of tinder for lighting a fire. Devices with nunchucks. Oh, Wii's the Nintendo Wii. Boy, that's strange. The Wii came up in the uh, it's a video game console manufactured by Nintendo, and that came up in the puzzle just a few days ago. Within the last few days, I don't remember exactly when. A slugging stat. Well, uh, RBI. This is what runs batted in or something. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sure that's wrong. Uh. Oh, here's another theme clue. Blouse and brooch, perhaps. So um, <laughs> here, oh, wow, there's two of them. This is great. We're, we've, we're upping the ante with our, with our theme clue construction. So we have to remove the louse to de-louse the answer and remove the roach. And then we have B and B, perhaps. Uh, a bed and breakfast, a public house, a pub, uh, which these days, pubs less frequently actually have overnight stay rooms, but some of them still do, in the UK anyway. Uh, for shame could be tut, tut. And it usually works in corners. Oh, right, this is that quote. Uh, let's look at some more crosses. Record speeds for short could be miles or kilometers per hour. I don't know which yet. I'm guessing it'll be MPH, but it could be K as well. And here, Adams of New York City politics. Eric Adams? There might be a catch with this. And here we have form of nepotism, symbolically. Not sure. Here we have to place as ceramic tiles, inset, you could inset ceramic tiles or decorative little bits. Economist and author Emily. And um, what do we have here? Uh, another theme clue. It has many beet and beef options. Is this removing the, the, the word bee? Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Uh, there are two instances of the word bee, which I don't usually think of removing bees as a form of pest control, but fair enough. I don't really begrudge Christina Iverson finding as many insects as possible to uh, extend the theme. So anyway, it has many uh, T and F options is what's left, which would be a, uh, a true-false test, perhaps? True-false test could be true-false exam as well. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Let's see if we can actually confirm or deny that right now. Member of the in crowd, and we have a question mark, so some kind of pun or wordplay. A guest could be a member of a crowd at an inn, at a public house or a B&B. There's a nice cross there. And a herd member, a member of a herd. Could be a herd of sheep, so it could be a ewe, a female sheep. And a boo-boo, in that case, would be an owie, so that fits. And we're matching the, matching the sort of tone of the clue to the answer. So a child might say an owie or a boo-boo. And so the, the answer matches the clue in that sense. All right. A big name in wom women's hair and skin care. Hers? Like autumn air. Yeah, I guess it must be. So autumn air is crisp. I do love crisp autumn air. Relative of a club, for short. Relative of a club, for short. Not really sure what this is about. Let's let's look around. G.I. blank. And then here we have Great Lakes natives. Could be Eries, the Erie tribe. Kind of bean could be a fava bean. A Taiwanese electronics giant could be, what, Acer, I think, is a Taiwanese electronics brand. And then G.I. trace tract. What is this? G.I. track. And then this... What is this? Relative of a club for short. Actually, not really sure what's going on here. What about... No, it's not going to help. Uh, there's nothing I can do that's going to help. <laughs> this is this is completely self-contained. Um, well, GI tract. Does that work with something? Relative of a club for short. Maybe Is this wrong? Crisp? Oh, it could be brisk. Does that look any better? Ah, it does. A relative of a club sandwich would be a BLT, a bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Boy, that was 
that was tricky. Crisp Automare and Brisk Automare. <laughs> Those are equally plausible answers. And I and I like both of them. But boy, that was a that was a um unlucky guess on my part. Wow. A place for boarding. I'm not sure. Okay, what did we have up here again? We had this quote. New York City transport stopping at Kennedy Airport. I'm pretty sure the A train goes to JFK. I'm pretty confident about that. And can you take the A train to Jamaica Transit Center? Or is that just the air train? Am I confusing the air train and the A train? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure the A train is the answer. Um, it usually works in corners. A stapler? Usually you staple paper in the corner of the paper, so that's probably the answer. Form of nepotism symbolically. Some kind of ties. School, oh, school ties maybe? How's that symbolic? Oh, I see. Not I, I was thinking ties as in um, metaphorically. Wait, is this the answer? I'm wondering if this has something to do with being educated at a private school and then having a tie that is specific to that school or something, and that is a symbolic reference to nepotism. I actually don't. I'm kind of taking a guess on that. I actually don't know that if that is the answer, it's not something I was previously familiar with as a concept, but that would be, if I had to invent an answer to this clue, that's what it would be. Does that work here? Economist and author Emily, oh boy, this is going to be tough because I'm not sure offhand. What if there were a C here? Adams of New York City politics. Okay, well, that could be Eric Adams. That indeed does sound like Eric Adams, like which is what I thought with that C. So does that, there might be a catch with this. A hilt? Like on a sword? A hint? There might be a catch with this. What is this? Records, right, right, right. So if this were MPH, a man has, oh, regret. Oh, so it's not MPH or KPH. Record speeds for short. RPMs? Oh, record as in a vinyl record. A vinyl record. I was thinking record as in um, setting of speed record, for instance. Uh, but it's not. And they don't need the pun indicator because it is completely literally correct. The speed of a record is RPMs, revolutions per minute. There we go. And so a man has cause for regret only when he sows and no one reaps. Charles Goodyear. Okay. That sounds much more plausible than anything else I was thinking. And there might be a catch with this. Oh, a mitt. You could, you could uh, be wearing a mitt and catch a ball with it. There we go. Ah, and here, oh, didn't look at this. This is another theme clue. Antelope, say. So here's another case where we can re remove the ant, I assume. And then the new clue is elope, say. Uh, so to get hitched is you elope, you get married uh, in secret or illicitly, and you have gotten hitched. And so this must be school ties. So I wonder, when it says symbolically, I mean, I would think school ties used not in the literal sense, but ties meaning just something that links you to somebody else. That would be a form of nepotism. But the usage of the word symbolically makes me wonder if indeed we are literally referring to school ties, the actual ties you would get from a school, which themselves serve as a symbol of nepotism. I, uh, that's my guess. <laughs> I'm sort of... I'm sort of creating that justification in my head, but I but I just can't think why else that would say symbolically. Okay, word before film and after clip. Word before film. Boy, why am I not seeing that clip? That's annoying. Sport at the Special Olympics. Not sure offhand. What is this? Haddock relative. Could be cod. And cod and haddock are both common in fish and chips, for instance. And, oh, is bocce played at the Special Olympics, perhaps? I'm just guessing that because of the two Cs. I can't think of too many sports that have that. Not that I'm any kind of sports expert, that's for sure. 
uh, to not be able to stand. And what is this? It'd be an honor. IT, it'd be an honor looks right. And member of the modern workforce. And here we have like most dorms nowadays. Most dorms nowadays are co-ed, co-educational. So um, they are not um, divided by gender. And you can count on them would be uh, Abakai. I assume we would pronounce the C with a hard C. I think that is Abasai, perhaps? I'm actually not sure. Anyway, the plural is Abacus, <laughs> uh, which is why I would assume it's Abakai, but I think maybe we soften that in the sort of English, is a, <laughs> English I don't know, not translation, but uh, English-tinged pronunciation. I'm not really sure. Anyway, word before film and after clip. Art. There we go. Art film or clip art. Clip art, the sort of stock images you get on computer publishing software. Well, you don't see that as much anymore. Member of the modern workforce, a robot, I suppose. And to not, ah, to not be able to stand something is to abhor it. I was thinking not be able to stand as in stand for office, but that is not what this is. And that makes the economist and author Emily Oster, which is certainly a plausible name. Um, I'll have to look her up. All right. So anyway, we've we've now we've now painted a a diagonal swath of fill onto this grid, and we've got about the other half roughly left. So let's see. Have we looked? Have, just get back to the beginning here. Not the beginning, but the um, the first incomplete answer in the acrosses. Prefix with thermal it could be geothermal. I mean, it probably could be other things as well. But let's try that because that's a fairly common phrase. Ah, approach for directions. So we need to remove the roach, and then we get app for directions, which looks like with that G, I would say Google Maps probably. And a one-time collaborator with Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. Um, easy E. Oops, no, 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 E-A. Is it S or Z? I think it's Z, E-Z-E. -E. No, I can't, why can I not type today? Let's check that though here. Sauce, yeah, okay. It is a Z because the sauce is booze. And some sports tournaments are open tournaments as opposed to invite in invitationals. And a wet bar, <laughs> question mark, so the pun indicator, some kind of wordplay. A wet bar is soap, the bar of soap is wet. And a word with story or sister. A sob story or sob sister that looks plausible. And here we have a person helping with the delivery as an OBGYN. And uh, in this case, obviously meaning a delivery of a child. And here we have screw up could be to botch, um, which is what I did uh, with that brisk and crisp. I botched that one. And it confused me a great deal for a while. All right. Calling on cue, perhaps? Uh, place for boarding. And I uh, haven't seen this yet. I'm about to tell you something. I'm about to tell... Oh, sorry. I'm about to tell you, so tell you something shocking. I didn't see the line break there. I'm about to tell you something shocking. Sit down, you might say. So often when you... Um, Often when the clue is in quotation marks like this and refers to something spoken, often the answer won't necessarily be a phrase that means the exact same thing. It might just be a phrase that would be that would accompany the one clued. I mean, it also could be the case that sit down is incorrect, but um, but if it is correct, that would explain why it is able to be correct, even though Obviously, sit down doesn't actually mean I'm about to tell you something shocking. It doesn't literally mean that, but the two things go, can often go hand in hand in speech. Oh, a calling, I see. So this isn't calling as a verb. It's calling as a noun. If one has found one's calling, one has found one's niche. I, have, so I don't think this crossword series is my calling necessarily, but it's certainly a niche doing these every day. Place for boarding. Oh, a kennel. You could you could board your dog at a kennel overnight. And war and peace in war and peace. So uh, war and peace, the concepts in war and peace by Leo Tolstoy, 
are themes. So themes, and what is the first bit? Not sure. Doesn't put it all on one's pony. On, doesn't put it all on one pony. So uh, you're hedging a bet, I assume this is. You're not putting all of your money on a single outcome. Hedging, oh no, no, sorry, doesn't put. So it's not, isn't putting, it's doesn't put. So it's hedges a bet. There we go. Okay. Here we have a focus of modern mining. Modern mining, is this some kind of Bitcoin thing? Oh no, it's not. Data mining. So it's not quite as hyper-modern as Bitcoin mining, but it's still a modern version of mining, data mining. Nouveau Mexique, e.g. So this is uh, obviously referring to new, well, not obviously, I guess, but it, well, arguably, obviously referring to New Mexico, a state of the United States, and but it's uh, it's written in French. And so we want the French word for state, which is état. And considerations for NCAA eligibility. NCAA is the National Collegiate National Collegiate Athletics. I don't know if it's administration or or, or what or association, but in any case, it administers um, university level uh, sports in the United States. And so considerations might be GPAs, grade point averages, and lip or cheek. Either of those is a synonym for sass. Giving somebody lip, giving them cheek, giving them sass. And if one takes something by force, one rests it, rests it out of their hands. Okay, let's see. What did we have? If we, this looks like a theme. It does. This is a theme clue. It is tickled. So <laughs> we remove the tick, and we're simply left with lead. Um, so you led somebody to something, or you led a conversation, or you led a country or other polity but I don't immediately see it, so let's move on. They can be graphic. Um, I feel as though quite a few things could be different meanings of the word graphic. Surround with light could be to enhalo something. And a destructive 2021 hurricane. Oh, was it Ida? War and peace and war and peace. Main themes, there we go. So that does look like an A. And spring locales. Oh, this is a combined clue. What is this? So seventy nine of oh, seventy nine down. It's not spring locales. It's sound heard. Sounds heard in ninety three across. Uh, spring locales could be in spas. You could have uh, natural spa, natural spring, natural spa, as opposed to a constructed one. And then you might hear the word ah in spas. I think I've seen that before as ahs and spas as something that sort of. Rhymes, rhymes with the other answer appropriately or something like that. Okay. And here we have Suvari of American Beauty, Mina Suvari, I believe spelled with an E rather than an I. But we'll have to check the crosses on that. And the hurricane, I think, is I did. So let's see. Lead. Clear-headed? I don't quite understand. With it in old slang, and that would be hep, a um, slangier version of, of hip, and then tickled, lead. If you've led, I mean, I can understand why someone who leads something would be clear headed, but how does lead mean clear headed? Is there another word that isn't clear that fits here? Oh, spearheaded, of course. Yes, you spearheaded something, you let it. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Very sorry. One's hanging, one hanging around Queen Elizabeth. One hanging around Queen Elizabeth. I assume that hanging is going to be the, uh, there's the question mark, sorry, question mark here. So this will be some sort of pun or wordplay. And I assume that hanging will be the one that is it. But I don't see it immediately. Put over the moon. So if, I think this might be to elate somebody, to make somebody very happy, to put them over the moon. Um, they can be graphic. I need some crosses here. Blank Wintour, longtime Vogue editor-in-chief, Anna Wintour, the um, legendary and, I guess, arguably infamous editor-in-chief of American Vogue magazine, to put over the moon. Sing? I'm not really sure. 
Snowpiercer error. Wasn't Snowpiercer a film? I saw that movie. You don't usually think of films as being aired. You think of television shows as being aired. Was there a television program based on Snowpiercer? Um, maybe. They can be graphic. Um, all right, running out of steam a little bit here. We've got to close out this puzzle. Avoids... Uh, I don't know, spurns or something, maybe tortoises challenge to the hair. Tortoises challenge to the hair. Rest up? I don't know. What did the tortoise, did the tortoise challenge, r- race? Tortoise challenge the hair to a race racing? Not sure. It doesn't look, racing doesn't really sound very good. What is this? Some family babysitters. Could be Nana's grandmothers, perhaps. So that does at least maybe start with racing something. The, Ven- ah, the Venetian way would be a canal. Venice, um, obviously a city famously um, packed full of canals. And little letters on dreidels. Oh, I'm not sure offhand. Um, it'll be a Hebrew letter, I guess. And Taj Mahal's home would be Agra. An exam that once required fingerprint identification for short. Oh, no idea, but purely based on the cross, I wonder if it's the LSAT, the law school admissions test, as I now know. Intimate, so if you intimate something, you uh, you get at it. It just occurred to me, I could have read that um, intimates, as in people who are intimate with one another. Um, but I think in this case, it is intimates, the verb, as opposed to the noun. Um, because it fits the crosses better. All right. A folklore villain could be a nag, or a hag, not a nag, a hag. Uh, an old crone, often a folklore villain. And supreme Egyptian god, Amun-Ra. Um, which I think, I think Amun-Ra was a uh, a sort of hybridization of Amun and Ra into... A, a supreme god. And I think, was that related to the the brief dalliance in monotheism propagated by the pharaoh Akhenaten? It might have been. I can't quite remember. It might be something along those lines. All right. Anyway, tortoise's challenge to the hare could be race me. And uh, so that's great. And then what is this? Gradually fix something or <laughs> what to do to understand this puzzle's italicized clues. Okay, so the the italics in this case were not because we're lacking a revealer. They were just to clue us in that something was going on. And I suppose that's because without that, it might be difficult to infer that these are all theme, that there's something punny going on. I mean, I found it difficult to sort through even with the italicized help. Um, I think this is one of those things that could go either way. These could be italicized or not. And if they weren't italicized, then this answer would this clue would spell out the numbers of each of the themes, the theme uh, answers. Perhaps there were too many of them. Maybe that's why it would have been too long of a list, because there are quite a few, actually. I like when the theme is very thoroughly explored in that way. Anyway, gradually fix something or what to do to understand this puzzle's italicized clue. Well, it looks like we're getting rid of the bugs, right? Doing something with the bugs. And so that, that by the way, uh, confirms this letter, letters on dreidels, which are the letter none. So the bugs get rid, no, destroy the bugs, destroy the bugs. That sounds violent. Um, nope, but I don't think that's it either because not a chance looks like the answer to that clue and that wouldn't fit with destroy. So let's, let's actually put in some vertical, some down clues and get some crosses. So not a chance I think is pretty plausible. And here we have, ah, letters that complete this word. That looks like appropriate, or it could be actually appropriate um, if the implication is that we've appropriated several letters from it. Oh, and it actually, no, it's, it's actually kind of doubly clever because it's <laughs> appropriate and the letters we've removed are apt, which means appropriate, but also we've appropriated the letters to do so. So the whole thing is a bit circular. And A number one could be top. If you are the top, you are A number one. 
good thing to be in. Time, you'd be in time if you're a musician, that would be a good thing to be in, although that's sort of specific. Boy, I can't, my keyboard is not working. Okay, here we go. Famous cryptid, familiarly. Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. A cryptid being a, um, I don't know exactly what defines, how you define that. Is it, I mean, it's a, it's a creature that is a, a sort of popular, a popular myth, I guess. Um, Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, that sort of thing. Um, but I don't know, and I assume that part of the definition of cryptid is cryptid is that they are in fact thought by mainstream science not to exist. I, I assume that that's the case. So they're part of cryptozoology. Anyway, a good thing to be in, it still could be time. Demon of Japanese folklore. Oh, I think I know this and I, the eye is familiar, but I can't bring it to mind. Squeezes out, could be ekes out, as in squeezes out a living, ekes out a living, for instance. And, uh, what is this? Avoids. Well, it could be spurns, actually, with that S there. What is this? Pop fly. Ah, so we remove fly, and we have simply pop. Pop could be a father. It could be uh, uh, soda in some parts of the United States, referred to as pop. Um, could be um, a sound. You know, it could be quite a few things. Um, right, that Snowpiercer thing. Spor oh, sporting to a certain natural style. Oh, no, sorry, not to. Sporting a certain natural style. Okay, that makes more sense. So afroed, if you have <clears throat> an afro, which is a, f a form of uh, natural hairstyle, you could be you could be afroed. All right, to match is to, well, no, it could be to match or a match. So it could be a pair, a match, a pair, maybe. I'm not very confident, so let's check the crosses. Snaps, you know, snaps could be pics, pictures, uh, in an abbreviated way. And alternative to Dropbox, iPhoto maybe, if you're specifically talking about saving photographs online, uh, exercise, and animal house. Could be a sty or a pen, or neither of those work with iPhoto. Um, what about this? Briefly, e.g., so here's another one. So we remove the fly. And we get brie, which is a cheese. That's pretty good. I like the, it's, uh, I enjoy um, the range here, both in terms of the length of the answers as well as the length of the clue. So we have briefly EG, which is itself obviously a brief uh, clue, but then we have these long ones, such as one wearing chapstick, perhaps. Uh, these remind me of cryptic crossword clues. All right. So to exercise something is to use it. So maybe, maybe not iPhoto iCloud. Okay, that makes more sense, actually. Although they're used quite differently. iCloud sort of automatically backs things up. You can save things directly to it, I guess, like you can with Dropbox. Anyway, nickname for the French Alexandre. I don't know. And here we have to bum out. Oh, I mistyped this. Ah, okay, that makes this make much more sense. So to bum someone out is to sadden them. So without that, I had USS in there. Um, and an animal house is a den. There we go. I think that's perfectly good. And a nickname for the French Alexandre. Um, Sasha and Pop. And what is this? No longer squeaky, one hopes. If something is no longer squeaky, perhaps, so we would hope... After being oiled, it is no longer squeaky. Oh, so yeah, this is Sasha, and then pop is soft drink, a soda. Okay, so it was that meaning of pop. And then what do we have here? Put over the moon. Oh, send. Ah, I see. That song really sent me. It really put me over the moon. It really elated me. There we go. And Snowpiercer error. TNT, I guess. That's a television network. And... One hang oh one hanging on Queen Elizabeth I see per uh, pearl uh, Queen Elizabeth famously wears many um, strings of pearls and they can be graphic graphic tees right okay so a TV uh, not a TV a T-shirt with an image on it a graphic tee 
Here we have Sarge's boss. That could be a Louis for lieutenant, um, since Sarge is short for sergeant, Louis is short for lieutenant. And I actually don't know if that's spelled L-O-O-I-E or L-O-U-I-E. So let's just leave that one out and look elsewhere. John, Wor John Wayne by birth. He must be an Iowan based on these clues. He must have been born in Iowa. And who ran against George Washington for president? Uh, was it Nance? John Nance? What's used to catch some waves? No, no, that looks wrong. No, none of that made sense. Why did I think that was right with that L? Gradually fix, oh, work out the bugs. There we go. Work out the bugs. Good thing to be in, oh, to be in tune. That's just funny. So I had said, I had said time and I said, oh, it's probably not because it's Sp too specific to music, and there isn't anything indicating that. But it turns out is an entirely different answer that is also specific to music. Although I would say being in tune is probably a that's a bit less specific than being in time. So it's a better answer. Demon of J Japanese folklore, and what's used to catch some waves and antenna. So this is oni, which does sound very familiar, and I wish I would have uh, brought it to mind more quickly, but I didn't. Antenna avoids is skirts. Ah, so I, so it was not uh, snubs or spurns or scorns or whatever it was I said. It is skirts um, uh, to avoid something. Exactly. Oh, who ran against George Washington for president? No one. Very good. Very, very good. That's a good final thing to get in there. And that confirms Sarge's boss to be Louis spelled with an L-O-O. -O. And there's the Sunday puzzle. That was a lot of fun. I really liked that theme. I, I very much enjoyed being completely befuddled by it. The horseback, I mean, I, you know, as as I said earlier, I, I was confused by horseback rider, didn't quite understand what was going. So horseback rider seemed like there was something I the chap kind of makes sense. What is it? And then mother, malice more formally, malice more formally, I just had absolutely no clue what was going on there. And North Pole felt like it was sort of correct, but fundamentally wrong in a very important sense. Um, and I guess it was the combination of being completely baffled by mother with having that scratch at North Pole that led me to the answer. And then from that point, they were all pretty straightforward because um, once you know how to, once you know what's going on, um, you're able to, uh, the clues are actually fairly straightforward. So a B&B &B is a public house, a pub. Um, a, uh, it has many B and B, and sorry, T and F options is a true false test. You probably wouldn't get that in a, you probably wouldn't get a regular New York Times crossword clue that said it has many T and F options being true false test, because I think the T and the F would be too, um, a little bit too straightforward, a little bit too literal, but it totally makes sense in this context in which they have been obscured. Um, we had tickled, we had, um, lead spearheaded. That one took me longer than it should have for some reason. Um, pop fly pop is soft drink. And I think there were some downs as well, but I don't remember where they all, oh, approach for directions, right? So app for directions, Google maps. And anyway, I'm not going to find all of them. I don't remember where they all are, but I really enjoyed I very much enjoyed that theme, those answers. That was a good, solid Sunday puzzle, I think. And um, a pretty pretty classic pun filled. Well, I guess you could argue whether these are puns or not. It's certainly wordplay. I guess they're not puns, but they are certainly wordplay. And it's nice to uh, it's nice to get a version of this that I've not seen before. I haven't seen this before. So uh, that was fun. Well done to the constructor, Christina Iverson. And... Um, that's it for the puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video as well. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, it uh, You will see these videos as they go up each day more easily. Um, I've started taking much more advantage in the YouTube app on my phone if, of the subscriptions tab on there. I don't have notifications set, uh, set up, so I don't get notified when new videos go up, but each day I can check my subscription tab on the YouTube app on my phone, and I will see what has gone up on my favorite channels. And so this channel could be in your 
subscription tab on your phone or the website has that as well. Um, if you subscribe. So thank you to everybody who's done so. And um, if you know someone who might enjoy these videos, you think might want to get into the New York Times crossword or already are and would like to have um, some, some online remote companionship in solving the puzzles, please do pass this on either directly to somebody you know or through your online community or forum or social network of choice. Uh, as I often say, uh, word of mouth is really the only tool that I have to grow this audience. So to the extent that any of you feel this is worth sharing, I'd very much appreciate it. And I think that's all. I think I've covered everything. Um, I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Monday puzzle. That will be a, uh, a much quicker solve. A gentle solve should be a nice way to ease us into the week. So I hope you'll, I hope you'll come back for that. Hope you have a great boxing day. Uh, one way or another, I hope you have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care.